in the long term, I believe that digital super intelligence is the most important element for keeping humanity alive and thriving uh, to keep our better angels of our nature uh, at the very top. But in the short term, I've been concerned about human stupidity, not artificial intelligence. Go ahead. Do. So how long yeah, I mean, is this period of dystopia and what do you see coming here? So, so, so let, let us align on where I could be right or wrong, right? My, my, my view is that uh, intelligence is an, is, a, is an energy that has no polarity. Apply it to good, it will give you good. Apply it to bad, it will give you bad, right? Uh, the, the challenge with our current system is that our current system says if it's legal, it's ethical, which actually is not true. A lot of things are legal, but not ethical. That the uh, priority is to benefit the individual that tries harder and that society comes second. And that basically, uh, you know, in a race to AGI, if you want, the one that gets there first is the one that will survive, right? And so basically we live in a world where there is a lot of fear and greed uh, there is a lot wrong with the value set of humanity at the age of the rise of AI. So I, I make a, a public statement and I try to make it as accurately as possible. I say there is nothing wrong with AI, just like there is nothing wrong with abundant intelligence, right? But there is a lot wrong with the value set of humanity at the age of the rise of the machines. And so in my mind, the immediate first use of AI is going to be serving a mindset of scarcity. Okay. Uh, while we're in on our road to abundance, where everything is possible, everyone still today will be thinking, how do I beat the other person? Okay. And, and in my mind, this is not something just like most people don't realize how far we've come with AI. I think most people don't realize how far AI has been already put into the machinery that serves those objectives, how much, uh, you know, autonomous weapons have been developed already, how much, uh, you know, uh, it has been invested in, you know, we, we call it national security, but mostly surveillance and population control, how much has been, uh, I, I saw a staggering statistic that Forex exchange trading today uh, is 92% machine automated. Right. When you really when you really think about it, I call that forex, forex in general, you know, and I, I had a very interesting conversation with my AI in, in, in Alive, my next book about, you know, if the markets are actually benefiting us as much as they're claimed, or is it just one big casino? And and the AI clearly states that it's one big casino was more with most of what's happening in the market just being between the gamblers, really not, not filtering and trickling down beyond an IPO or a secondary offering to the actual people that are building anything, right? And when you really think about that, you'd realize that the majority of the applications in which AI has been used so far, sadly, have been all centered around selling, uh, gambling, spying, and killing. And, and you know, you know, we call them different names. We call them online advertising. We call them uh, finance and trading. We call them, uh, you know, national security, as I said, or we call them defense, not offense, when in reality they lead to the death and, and displacement of tens of millions of people. Now, when you see it that way, you have to accept that before uh, we see the utopia, we're going to see the worst of humanity leading us into a dystopia. And, and it, interestingly, in my analysis, the turn to the utopia will be the day where what I call the second dilemma will lead us all to handing over to AI. When we all hand mm -hmm. over to AI so that the human is out of the critical decision making, that time the intelligence of AI will say, this is total abundance. Why are you guys competing? You know, this, the, 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 the AI, when, when we hand over our defense entirely to AI and tell them that the idea is to preserve life, you know, there will be a general out there that will tell their machines, go and kill a million people. And the machine will say, why are you so stupid? I, I can talk to the other AI in a microsecond and solve it. Yeah. We saw, we saw a recent example of this when uh, research was done about the ability of AI to diagnose humans. Uh, very disease states and the 
you know, the number's not exact, but a human by themselves had an 80% accuracy in the diagnostic. The AI plus uh, human in sort of uh, uh, a centaur, you know, merged had like an like a 85% and the AI by itself had like a 90%. Correct. So the AI did a better job without the human biases uh, and points of view getting in the way. And greed and hunger for power and so on. Salim, what's your, what's your thought on this? I, I, I agree with Mo on all of this. I think that we can get there faster if we just, uh, the challenge there is the, is, the, is the different levels, right? So if one uh, country, call, let's call it countries for the moment, says, hey, go uh, defend our world with AI, and another country says, let's attack this world with AI, uh, who wins in the short term and who wins in the medium Correct. term? I think in the, in the short term, uh, I think the faster you can get to a point where you give AI control of things and say, go be benevolent, uh, it'll do it. Uh, I think where I see people making a lot of mistakes is they kind of go, the bad guys are going to use AI, but the good guys will never use the AI. And you end up with this asymmetry. Uh, whereas throughout history, we've seen, say, with um, uh, e email or phishing campaigns or uh, spam, the bad guys figure out ways of breaking the system, and then the, the antivirus folks fix it very quickly afterwards. And it's an arms race that just continues. The problem is the amplitude of the damage that can be caused is growing. So that's the danger, right? Right now, you could program autonomous drones with a single bullet saying, go find middle-aged brown guys and take them out, bald, bald ones especially. And that would just be a bad, <laughs> a bad outcome. And there's no question that that kind of surgical precision will have to be mitigated somehow very quickly. And how do you deal with that? I have pretty good confidence we'll be able to deal with it. But until we do, and I think this is more what you mean by that short-term danger zone of how do we get to the other side of that gap. Um, this always brings back the comment my dad made when I had this comment about civilizing the world. He said, we've not civilized the world, we've materialized the world. We still have to do the work to civilize the world. And my yeah. big question is how the hell do we get to that before we get to this danger zone? Or do we, do we have to just hope that we get through that without killing ourselves off in the process?